Woodrow the White House Mouse, written and illustrated by Peter W. Barnes and Cheryl Shaw Barnes. This is an autographed copy. There's her signature. Enjoy, Cheryl Shaw Barnes. Woodrow, the White House Mouse. Every four years, like the rest of us do, the mice of the nation elect someone too. Someone smart, someone brave, someone good. Not a louse, a rodent respected, a president mouse. Woodrow G. Washington Tale won the last vote. A landslide election, historians note. A good politician, he won it with ease when he promised to double production of cheese. So, on a cold winter's day, with most solemn respect, two presidents swore to preserve and protect our nation, our freedoms, our fireside chats, the flag, apple pie, and yes, even cats. The White House was lit floor to roof, wall to wall, for the beautiful, splendid inaugural ball. Soon Woodrow arrived with First Lady Bess and their children in tow, about eight, more or less. There were Truman and Franklin, their two oldest sons, and Quentin and Kermit, the mischievous ones, and Dolly and Millie, the twins, George and Art, not even reporters could tell them apart. Say cheese. The stateroom was filled with goodwill and good cheer. The mouse children watched from the great chandelier. It was going quite well until George, with a whoop, slipped and landed. Curb splash in a senator's soup. Now the job of the president is no cup of tea. Many places to go, many people to see. In the great Oval Office, his work is conducted, decisions decided, instructions instructed. Each day on the job, Woodrow jumped to his work. There's no time to dally and no time to shirk. From his desk on a shelf with assistants around him and a mind so perceptive, no task could confound him. As quick as a blink, he'd go right down his list. There were poor mice in churches he had to assist, writing notes to supporters and babies he'd kissed, signing treaties to help cats and mice coexist. And once in a while, there was briefing the press to answer all questions. They demand nothing less. But it wasn't too long before Woodrow was thinking. Sir, what about the cheese negotiations with Switzerland? Mr. President, I have a question for the tall one. What about your investigation of radical groups? How? Could saying more mice, in, would you be sending more mice into the field? Will you be naming any rats to your cabinet? Is this how they treated FDR and Abe Lincoln? But the president also gets time to play. Every Easter, for instance, is egg rolling day. There are orange eggs, yellow eggs, purple eggs too. There are even some eggs colored red, white, and blue. One night, Millie dreamed of an East Room ballet. My goodness, she practically practiced all day. She, she's joined by the famous Marine Mouse Quartet for her flawless finale, a fine pirouette. Now, the Red Room and Green Room are not side by side, but they're wonderful places for children to hide. Will they play hide-and-seek? And Woodrow is seeking. But he finds them so fast. Could
could it be? He is peeking. The blue room at Christmas is decked to the ceiling. The fire is roaring. The children are squealing. Excited that Christmas is once again here to share with our loved ones and those we hold dear. And as he nodded to sleep, the good President Mouse was thankful for family and country and house. It's all so wonderful, was his happy reflection, that a fellow just might want to seek re-election. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and like so you don't miss another story. If you have a story you'd like me to read, leave a note in the comment section below.